Now that we have Django installed, we'll use it to create our new application. When we start a new Django project, we'll use the Django-admin command. This tool will create our project skeleton for us. Let's run the command now, but with no options, and we'll see that it gives us a lot of choices. You'll usually want to run this with a subcommand. In our case, we want to start a new project, so we use the subcommand start project, and then the name of our project. We'll call our project blather, which is a word that means talking a lot without making much sense, and fits perfectly with the kinds of content people will share on our social network. When we run that command, not a lot happens, but let's look at our new project. You'll see that we have a folder called blather for our project. Inside of this folder, we have a manage.py file and another folder called blather. Inside the subfolder, we have a settings.py file, a urls.py file, and a whiskey.py file. Nothing too exciting. In order to do much, we need a project that has at least one app. Apps are Python modules that let you compartmentalize your application's functionality. It is common for small web apps to be a single app, but as your project grows, you may want to break your project into discrete apps. This is particularly useful if you have some functionality you use in different projects. The Django documentation explains how you can decouple your apps from each other to make them reusable. For our project, we just need to create one app, but we'll be using some of our Django's built-in apps for admin interface and user authentication. To create an app, you'll use the manage.py command that is part of our new project. If you run python manage.py, you'll see that it again expects a subcommand, and there are a lot of commands available. We'll use the most common subcommands during this course, but for now we want to create an app called blat. A blat is to blather, as a tweet is to Twitter. Run python manage.py start app blat and press enter. Now when we look at our project we see a new folder called blat and inside of it we have admin.py, models.py, test.py, and views.py. We also have a folder for migrations. This is where we'll spend most of our effort during this course. Let's try running our project and see what we have. We do this by using the command python manage.py run server. When we do this, we'll be informed that we have unapplied migrations. Ignore that for now. Below that, we see a message that the development server is running on localhost port 8000. Let's check it out on our browser. Copy that URL from your terminal and put it into the address bar of your browser. Voila, we have a website. If you add the word admin to the end of the URL, you'll see that we also have an admin interface, but we can't log in yet because there's no users created. Switch back to the terminal and press Control C to stop the development server. We want to make a new user, but first we need to initialize a database. Django is configured for SQLite by default. This is a simple database great for local development and apps that get little traffic or are mostly read-only. Django will help us manage our database structure for using migrations. This is a history of every database command needed to create the structure of your application. Right now our database structure is simple because it's just making use of Django's built-in admin interface. We only need to run python manage.py migrate to run the built-in apps migration. We should see some helpful messages and some OKs. Now we need to create our admin user. Let's run python manage.py create super user. When you do this, you'll be asked some questions about the user, and then it'll tell you how it was created successfully. Now we need to start the server again, so run python manage.py run server, and then head back to the browser. Now log in using the newly created credentials and marvel at all the code that you didn't have to write. We're done with this video, but before you move on, click around in the admin interface to see what you can do. Try creating users with different roles and create some groups to see what that allows you to do. This will help you understand a little better the tools we now have available as part of our admin interface. In the next video, we'll create our database models so that we can store our own data.